Hi everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit, and as always, I'm glad to be back for another video. And this one is kind of a special one. So, uh, I have made it a rule that I don't spend very much time on eBay looking at fountain pens because I always get myself into trouble. Um, but I, I had a little extra money to burn last month, and so I decided I wanted a pen. And I wanted a vintage pen, so I went and I got this. This is a 1936, thereabouts, Parker Duofold Senior in a very unusual color and uh, even came with its original box. Now, I would just, before I go in to talk about the pen very much, I would just like to mention, I actually really like that pens of 80 years ago, this is what it came in. It didn't have clamshell cases or pen coffins or silk lined this or velvet lined that or hard or soft wood painted calligraphy. Fountain pens were just such a regular occurrence that it came in a box, just a box. And I think that's fantastic. Um, obviously, when it comes to buying vintage pens on eBay, it's always kind of a bit of a toss up. You never know exactly what's going to show up at your doorstep. I could not have been more thrilled with this pen. It was much nicer than I was expecting. So let me take you over here now to the pen itself. This is the Parco du Parker Duofold Senior, circa 1936, in the blue marbled finish, which from what research I have been able to do is a very rare finish. I and I should say, I'm not a Parker vintage expert by any stretch of the imagination, so it may be that uh, some of my facts are incorrect here. Uh, I'm going off of what I've been able to piece together online and from what other folks have told me, um, but it's a pretty pen. It's a very pretty pen. And what surprised me more than anything else is this pen looked brand spanking new. If I if if I hadn't known this was a vintage pen, I would have assumed it was a modern uh, replica. It it looks that good. There's not a micro scratch. There's almost there's a little tiny bit of itty bitty bit of brassing right there on the clip, but other than that, it's uh, it looks like it the day it it came out of the factory back in the 30s. So I could not have been more thrilled with this pen. Uh, Made in England, so Parker had several factories, but this particular pen was made in England, and uh, I actually, it was shipped over here from the UK, so I'm very grateful to have gotten it. So let's talk through this, the, the pen and the stats. So it's a flat top pen, comes down to a gold plated nib, or a gold plated clip rather. This is the standard ball clip on some of the older Parkers. It's fairly stiff, but still, you know, with enough give that you can actually get it over a piece of fabric. It says Parker down the, the clip there with one band at the bottom of the cap. It's beautiful material here. And then it says Parker Duofold, R-E-G-T-M. So, you know, registered trademark. Uh, made in England right there. It's... It's very the it's clear in person in the right light, but it's uh, it's hard to see on this marbled material. And then this pen is a button filler, so the cap comes off, and to fill the pen, you stick the the nib in the ink, press the button down, release it, let the ink sack inside suck up the ink, and put the blind cap back on. I like button filler pens. Uh, I like them a lot. It's a neat filling system, and I, w I, I can't help but wonder why this, this one in particular went away, because they don't seem very hard to service. I've actually serviced one myself, and I don't have a lot of experience with that. Um, they do a good job. I, I like button fillers. Uh, anyway, uh, we remove the, the um, cap, Sorry, I can't talk today. And the threads are nice. There's just a little bit more give in them uh, than there are in perhaps some of the modern pens, but you know, the pen's 80 years old. Uh, that's to be expected. Nice comfortable section here, nice ergonomically swooped section. Uh, the threads are not terribly sharp. So even if you do hold your pen a little bit further back, uh, it's not very uncomfortable. And then it comes with a 14 karat gold nib that says Parker Duofold 14K pen. N. 
um, as in the letter N for Nancy. Uh, this is a, a medium-ish nib. And then it's got uh, an old style feed on the bottom where it's kind of flat and then it's got only the, the fins on the sides. So all in all, it's a pretty, you know, I've said it before. This is a beautiful material. It's one of my favorite materials of any of the pens that I own, including some of the, the pens that I really like from uh, from Visconti. This is a, just a really neat material that you don't see often these days, this kind of marbled material. Um, some stats on the pen. It is 138 millimeters when it's capped. It is 123 millimeters when uncapped, and you can see here uh, fits pretty pretty nicely in the hand. It's a little short to use uncapped, not terrible by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I won't ever or post this pen um, just because it's a vintage pen. I don't want to run the risk of cracking the lip of the cap by posting it. It's 163 millimeters when posted. I did post it once for you people because I love you and I want to, to let you know, but I won't ever post this again. Uh, in terms of the grip, it's a little bit narrower. It's 10.2 millimeters. Uh, this is the, the, the dual fold senior is the largest size of the senior, I believe, or the, the dual fold from this era. So it is the larger one. You can get lady dual folds, and I believe just the regular dual fold and dual fold junior, which which are in smaller sizes. But 10.2 was the the grip size in the middle of the section. 12.4 millimeters, the widest point of the barrel, and the widest point of the cap was 15.1 millimeters. It's also Nice lightweight pen at 14 grams inked and without the cap and 21 grams or 22 grams rather with the cap. So vintage pens, I've said this before, but it bears repeating. I'll, I'll do a writing sample to show you how it writes, but you can't expect any other pen will write exactly this, this, the way that this pen did, unless you find another one that's, that is a basically an untouched condition as this one appeared to have been. Um, because Vintage pens, you just never, there's so many factors that go into it. So uh, let's do our writing sample. We are using the Parker Duo Fold Senior. And I believe this is from, excuse me, 1936 or thereabouts. Let's try that again. 1936. Nib is 14 karat gold. And the ink is J. Urban. I apologize for the mispronunci mispronunciation, which I am about to uh, release, but I believe it's Lidete is the pronunciation of that. It's kind of a nice um, coppery slash coffee-colored brown ink. Uh, I actually like it. This is probably, of all of the J. Urban inks I've ever used, this might be one of the ones that I like the most. So, uh, nice ink. And we're on a Rhodia dot pad, as we always are. Okay, and our quote. All right. Boy, isn't that the truth. <laughs> now, you notice there was a little bit of a hard start here. Um, I th the reason for that has to do with the pen's sweet spot. Now, I haven't, I haven't made any adjustments to the nib. I probably will, but they'll only be very, very minor. The problem with it, the nib is uber smooth, like very, 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 very smooth. I haven't had any problems with ink flow at all. Um, this is probably one of the smoothest nibs I've ever used. Back in the day where people actually, uh, you know, where, where there were enough master craftsmen to really make a nib sing from the factory. Um, at least in my hazy, you know, historically pleasing 
fantasy world that never actually really existed. I may have just gotten lucky with this. But, um, but the problem is that if you roll this nib, you got nothing. Like, you have to get it started directly on the nib. But, and if you roll it, then it will kind of work. But if you start rolled, you're, you're out of the, the running here. So, so because the, of the way that the paper is on the table, it's a little out of my space. And I tend to roll the pens a little bit more when I'm doing these writing samples than I do when I write in real life. Other than that, though, I mean, the pen is, it, it's comfortable in the hand. It's moderately wet. It's not too terribly, uh, too terribly wet, too terribly dry. Um, but it's just a nice, nice writer. Um, it just kind of floats across the paper. I, I really like the feel of this nib. Uh, upside down writing, very scratchy, fine line, but it works. And uh, in terms of line variation, I'm not going to push this one very much. Uh, it's it's a rigid nib, and you see it railroads there um, pretty easily. So... Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to push this nib. It's it's nearly 80, 80 years old, and it wasn't meant to flex, so why bother? Uh, but, you know, other than that, it's a nice nib. It's a beautiful pen in a really lovely material. And I just love, I love a pen with a sense of history. You know, I love new pens. I, In general, I much prefer new pens to vintage pens. And I know I'm committing all kinds of blasphemy by saying that, but it's true. I like new stuff. I always have. Um, but when you come across a vintage pen like this, it's something special. And it, it has a kind of a, not to get too melodramatic, but it has kind of a spirit about it. And, and this pen spoke to me when I saw it on eBay. It really spoke to me when I held it in my hand. This is one that's going to be in my collection for a good long while, I suspect. I adore this beautiful pen. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, you want to correct some of my understandings about the pen, which they're... Uh, there may be several misunderstandings in what I know about it because I don't know much. Uh, please leave them in the comments below or email me at penhabit at gmail.com. If you want to see some additional photos, you can head over to penhabit.com and take a look at the photos on the blog post there. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit.